So I recently watched this video by a popular audio YouTuber and he was saying that there was these YouTubers in the scene propagating the lie that you can't discern the difference between a 320 MP3 encoded with a high quality compression algorithm and an uncompressed original WAV file. Because if you just have trained your ears to hear this difference, it's so obvious, it's a night and day difference and you can really hear this difference so he's going to shatter that myth. And here's the proof because he went on this website, this NPR uh, article that had blind tests and he went through and he was just like, boom, yeah, I can hear the difference there. And he got all the right answers. I was like, wow, this guy has either got really good hearing or I don't know, there's something up here. So I went on the website myself and took the test and lo and behold, I got all the answers right myself as well. And so I was like, okay, th there's something up here. Yeah, with this website, there was it wasn't a huge difference. It wasn't a night and day difference. I think to an untrained listener, you probably wouldn't really tell a big difference. You'd probably struggle. But I heard an obvious difference and I got all of them right. But I would normally, if it was under normal circumstances and I had encoded the MP3s myself, I wouldn't hear the difference. So there's obviously something going on there. And what is this article? It's an NPR article uh, about Jay-Z's streaming service Tidal. It's a bit old now. So the article is obviously saying, oh, can you hear the difference? And you go through and yeah, I can hear the difference. You think, oh, well, I must need Tidal then. So anyway, I'll just grab the audio from the website. We can listen to the delta between the MP3 at 320 and the original wave. And we'll see how high the delta is. And then I'll encode the MP3 properly. And then we'll hear what the delta is there. And then we can see, I, I haven't done this yet, but it, I'm really guessing that we're going to hear a much higher delta on the NPR one. I don't want to say any accusations. Maybe it was accidental, but I can definitely hear that there's way more artifacts in that 320 MP3 than is normal for higher quality uh, encoding at 320. So um, if there is a big difference in delta, we'll know that that article is nonsense, whether it's intentional or, or not. I don't want to attribute any uh, intentions or motivations we're just going to do the objective test now and we're going to have a look at the results so this session looks pretty busy you might not get what's going on here straight away but it's really easy so we've got the original wave files here we've got some mp3 files here and then we've got the delta which means if i take an mp3 file and flip the polarity and then play those two together the product of that is the delta so what are these things so that's the uncompressed wave. So I've just literally pressed play because after you answer the question on the website, it says uh, which is which. So I just pressed play on the uncompressed wave and recorded it into Reaper using a digital loopback. So it's digital one-to-one. -one. It's not like gone out of analog and stuff like that. It's, I've done exactly the same thing, but using the 320 because it tells you what one is the 320, of course. So I've just gone through and recorded all of the 320s as well on that track there. I've cut it up and I've time-aligned it because obviously if you want to extract the delta, you need to make sure it's precisely time-aligned. And in Reaper, you can, you can go in like ridiculously far and you can see like the individual samples. And I uh, aligned it sample accurate like really it is bang on for all of them and so then i've extracted the delta by doing the polarity flip and so we see um in the delta see delta npr 320 so that is the difference between these two so whatever the difference is between the uncompressed wave and the 320 that we're hearing that is this delta here. That is the difference. And then, so I've just taken the uncompressed wave files and then bounced them out in Reaper, just in a normal way. Here, uh, you can just select MP3, constant bitrate, 320, and I bounced it out in Reaper as 320. But I also bounced it out as 256 and 192. And so we see here, the Reaper 192, the Reaper 256, and the Reaper 320, and then we've got the original NPR 320, and so, uh, and and then I've done the deltas for those as well. So, um, if the NPR website was correct and they actually used a high quality 320 MP3 encoder for the files that they claim on their website is 320, 
Then the delta between the MPR one and the Reaper 320, between these two here, the delta should be about the same level. And the thing is, we are more interested in the peak levels here because when people listen to the differences between the MP3s, you one of the, the things that you're listening out for is the transients, whether the transients have been eroded. And the transients are best represented with peak level and not with RMS or K-weighted uh, laughs and stuff because we're not really interested in the general sort of like background level over time. We're more interested in those transients and how they've been eroded and impacted and the accuracy of the transients. So the time domain accuracy is best represented in the error uh, between uh, the MP3 and the uncompressed wave. So that is... Uh, manifesting as the the delta here that we've got there and if we just literally just peak normalize this stuff boom we can see how much it needs to be boosted to get to 0 dB full scale and we see here that the NPR delta needs to be boosted about 19 dB whereas the Reaper one needs to be boosted uh, about 23 dB so we can see that there is a 4 dB difference there. So whatever's happening on the NPR website, then they've managed to make the delta 4 dB worse, which is a fair amount, than just a bog standard bouncing it out as a 320 MP3 in Reaper. But I also bounced out these other two, a 256 in Reaper and a 192 in Reaper. And we can see that the the 192 needs to be boosted about 17 dB to reach full scale. And the lower this number, it means the louder the delta, because if you have to boost it up more, then it means that the delta was quieter. So the, the higher the number here, the, the better the conversion was, right? So um, we can see that 192 is worse than the NPR, but it's about the same, it's actually the identical number, as the 256. So right off the bat, it seems that the, the algorithm, the codec that they use in the NPR website may have been less of a 320 and more in line with what I'm getting on my end as a 256. And now, if 256 is considered the 320 well, now now you, you you're you're introducing a bit more of a difference so maybe that's a bit more audible a 256 compared to a 320 but it's a bit unfair to label a 256 as a 320 because 320 has got quite a bit more data and and the quality is quite a bit better and so but what we can do is we can just um go ahead and uh, make these all the same level as they just previously were, and just turn it up some amount so that we can just listen to the delta. And we can just we can just see straight away that the delta is uh, way louder on the NPR one than it is on the lame conversion here. We can go through some of the other ones. So it, it looks here it looks less dramatic, but all of them and, and there it looks less dramatic, but but all of them are louder on the NPR one, which isn't a good sign because we want the the delta to be approximately the same if it is indeed a 320 because that's a 320 and that's supposedly a 320. So it should be about, about the same, right? Unless the, the codec that they use is just awful and it was genuinely a, a, a 320, but it was just an awful codec. I don't know. Um, but we can just take a listen now and see what it sounds like. So you can hear that the delta is just way louder in pretty much the entire frequency spectrum as that one. But what we can do is we can just go through and we can um, like boost up uh, all of them. Like we can just loudness normalize all of them. And I'm sure there's going to be some kind of variation here. But we can just loudness normalize literally just everything independently. And then we just remove that additional gain that we added. And we can see here that there is a significant uh, difference 
that's like a 6 dB difference between those two and the uh, plus 18 here is more in line with the um, the 192 even. Like the 256 here needed to be boosted up more than the uh, NPR one. So just based off of the peak level, the kind of like transient um, degradation or transient, the error between the original and uh, in the transient response, it seems to be somewhere in the ballpark of a 192, <laughs> which is like, okay, that's not 320 at all. Um, this one looks slightly less dramatic. So the NPR one was boosted up uh, just like a, uh, about 2 dB. There's still 2 dB difference, but I mean, that, that one seems to be slightly less dramatic there. Maybe because there's uh, slightly less transient information there. Um, we've got uh, this next one. What is that? That's like 3 dB difference or something. That seemed to be slightly more successful than the 256, but it's definitely not as good as the 320 either. Then here, what is that? Wow, that's a, a lot more of a difference here. That's like 4.5 dB difference here and that would be more in line with the 256 it's almost identical to the 256 and so i don't think this website is accurately representing the quality of 320 um mp3s especially not in a modern context with the modern technology that we have but as far as i'm aware uh the lame encoder hasn't come on like leaps and bounds since this article was made but um but yeah it, it just it just seems like these maybe are not 320s or maybe they're just like that they, they were encoded poorly with weird settings or with a bad encoder or something but yeah you can definitely hear the difference more with this comparison thing on their website than if you just encode them normally bog standard with the default lame settings with cbr 320 uh you, you can it's way harder to tell the difference doing this with 320 out of reaper uh you, you really can't hear the difference very well at all uh compared to um what would seem like the case on the npr article here so there you are i don't think the guy knew that the npr website wasn't good uh in this case um, so I can definitely forgive him for that. I'm not throwing any shade at that YouTuber. I've got nothing bad to say about him, but this particular website um, is a bit misleading and he went off of that faulty information to think that he could hear a massive difference. I can hear a massive, well, not massive difference, a bit of a difference. And so you can actually pick the highest quality one reliably on that website. But in real life, when you actually encode a, a 320 MP3 in a good way, uh, without all of the additional artifacts that was in the NPR website, then actually you can't hear the difference. So uh, there you go, uh, just a quick video. And for everyone who's interested in the speaker stuff, that should be my next video. Finally, you got the speakers from Neumann. Um, and if you uh, know what I mean about that, you know what I mean. And that's the uh, next video. So it should be this week. So uh, stay tuned for that. I'm going to release the uh, three-way course. Everything's going to be up this week so sorry for the long wait for the people who have been really uh, looking forward to the speaker stuff it's all going to be coming this week so stay tuned